So today's gospel presents us with two stories of Jesus' power. The feeding of the 5,000 and Jesus walking on the water. Both are stories of Jesus' power over the ordinary, his power over nature, his power to perform miracles, his power to surprise us with the unexpected. And both stories are important, but I want to take a look at the first story this morning, particularly these verses. Philip answered him, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Then Jesus took the loaves. When he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so all the fish, as much as so all the so also all the fish, as much as they wanted. And then it goes on to say that they gathered up leftovers from the crowd. I think it's fair to say that often when we listen to this story, when we read this story, the first question that comes to mind is how. How did Jesus do it? And in order to answer that question, some have suggested that the story is really about shared resources. That by passing out the five loaves and the two fish, Jesus encouraged or maybe even guilted others to share what they had brought along with them. But I think that how, in this instance, is an unfortunate question. And the and shared resources is an unfortunate interpretation. Because it doesn't matter how Jesus did it. I'm reminded of a song by the Abbott brothers. It's called Smithsonian. And the, uh, the chorus goes like this. Call the Smithsonian, I've made a discovery. Life ain't forever and lunch isn't free. Loved ones will break your heart with or without you. And here's the salient line. Turns out we don't get to know everything. Turns out we don't get to know everything. Jesus was the Son of God. Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. God incarnate. We're never going to know how he did it. It's, and it's not that important. What's important is that he did it and why he did it. He did it because he had compassion on the crowds. Jesus looks at the, looked at the people and he, saw, and he saw people who were hungry. And not just for food, but for God. They were hungry. They were hungry to be accepted. They were hungry to belong. They were hungry to know that their life had meaning and value. They were hungry to find a place of comfort and rest. And he wanted his disciples to step up and do something about it. But Jesus' challenge wasn't to get creative or come up with the next best feeding program. The challenge that Jesus gave his disciples his disciples was to rely on him, to rely on the power of Jesus, which is the power of God. And Jesus challenges us to do the same, to rely on him in all things, to step up and step out in faith. Too often, though I think we think in terms of doing things for Jesus rather than doing things with Jesus. We need to do things with Jesus, supported and encouraged by his power, the same power that comes to us through the Holy Spirit. There are a lot of hurting, hungry, lonely people in this city. It is an immense problem, not unlike feeding 5,000 people with five loaves 
and two fish. But like the disciples, we look at the problems and we look at our resources and we panic. We freeze. And we say to ourselves, we don't have enough. We don't have enough money. We don't have enough people. We don't have enough time. We don't have enough energy. And pretty soon, we don't have enough becomes our mantra. And what a horrible mantra for a people of hope to have. Because of course we will have enough. There will always be enough. This story tells us, this story promises us that. That there will be enough if we rely on Jesus. Just like that little boy with the loaves and fishes, we bring what we have to Jesus. Money, gifts, ideas, talents, whatever it is, and Jesus makes it enough. He makes it enough. Jesus takes all that we give him, blesses it, and he makes it enough. And he gives it back hundredfold, two hundredfold, three hundredfold. Maybe not right away, and maybe not always, so it's noticeable. In fact, sometimes it's so unnoticeable that we take credit for the miracle Jesus just did in our lives. And when he gives whatever we brought to him back, it's not for our sake. That isn't, this, this, this isn't really about us at all. It's about the people we're called to serve. Jesus blesses our resources and our endeavors so that we can make an impact on other people's lives. So that we can feed other people physically and spiritually. God is calling us, both individually and collectively, as a congregation, to do great things for the kingdom. And we can do great things for the kingdom. We can glorify God, and we can take care of the people that are sent to us. In a sense, I think Jesus is calling us, empowering us to be the miracle. In order to do that, we need to bring what we have to Jesus. We need to use it without hesitation. And we need to trust that Jesus will make it enough. In fact, that Jesus has made it enough. Amen.